Well, hello everyone, it's me, Sapphira. Welcome back to the World Burlesque Day live stream. It's a real privilege to be here and reaching the two pieces of our program that are the certificates of contribution. So as you know, burlesque really wouldn't be propelled into new frontiers if it wasn't for tireless creators and complete innovators. And the next two people that we acknowledge today are two such incredible individuals who have been really instrumental in keeping burlesque alive, in getting it to new audiences, infusing it with new energy. And I am delighted to welcome these to onto our program today. I'm just going to say a quick hello to who's in the chat. We've got Scintillating K, Digital Power Shop, Foxy Mix Moxie. How you doing, darling? Guys, really lovely, darling, to see you. Bon Bon Burley, American Duchess. Hey, wow, this is so cool. I'm still got my crown kind of intact here. Hasn't Ruby Jewel, Jolie Goodnight and Sugar Cane done an amazing job of our interviews thus far? I've been sitting back thinking, this is excellent <laughs> to have such incredible talent helping. And now, of course, a modesty blaze really needs a little introduction, but she has just joined us here. So I'm so delighted to be giving her the real acknowledgement that is more than deserved from almost a 30 years career as a tease artist and now getting more into body compassion and goddess workshops. She's just really become an advocate for body positivity and I think has been a real reason that burlesque in Europe got so big. So today we are attributing her a certificate of contribution. She's joining us um, just quickly here on the live stream. But if you don't know, she's really Britain's reigning burlesque entity. She's one of Europe's most famous burlesque artists from performing for all the big brands like Dior and Cartier with showpieces in her prime and she has totally teased and titillated all across Europe. So she was a very big inspiration to many people in the early Whoopi Club years of London's exciting burgeoning scene and really I think still is a huge icon for us all as a model, a woman, a female ambassador. So I'm just going to see if I can welcome her to the chat and hopefully this will work because sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. I can't see how to now invite you. In modesty, if you know how to join the live stream, just invite yourself or request to join. That might be what we need to do. Ah, here I am. Okay, here we go. I've worked it out. The pandemic. Hello, modesty, please. Hi, how are you? Very, very well. Thank you so much for inviting me on. It's a real pleasure. Well, it's absolutely a total pleasure for us as well. And you're, are you in specifically Monte Carlo? Refresh me. Yes, indeed. Oh, Monaco. I don't know why everyone says Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo is like a postage size area of Monaco, which is actually in itself only the size of a postcard anyway. So. <laughs> Wow, they both sound fabulous, and I would love to visit, you know, Monte Carlo, and then kind of maybe see the perimeter of Mon Monaco in the one go. <laughs> so, is it warm there? Have you have you had to rug up? I'm in a roll neck. Spring is springing, indeed, um, but there is uh, still a, a little nip in the air, hence hmm. the polar neck. <laughs> Right. Yes, I hear you. I'm on the pulmonic front. But there's a way to glam them up. I've added a bit of marabou boa, which can do no wrong, right? Right. <laughs> so we are tributing you today as a certificate of contribution. And I thought I would just ask a little bit about your incredible career, because really 30 years is a long time and um, you have been trailblazing. 20. 20. <laughs> 20. Oh, sorry. I'm not that old. <laughs> Right, I was you know, I, I'd be delighted if I was 60 and I, I was looking like this, but yeah, 20 years. <laughs> 20. And tell us, um, what has been the biggest, most memorable moment of your career, really? Is there any particular funny moment that stands out? I know there's probably hard to whistle it down to one, but have you had any kind of funny moments to share? 
Oh, funny moments. Sure. Um, I, I guess the one that really stands out is when I was doing my West End show and uh, I threw my feather bra um, or pinged it off and um, it landed on a hot light and, and I was on the horse and um, I could just smell burning and I saw flames and I was really thinking, does the show go on? I don't know. Um, and we had to bring the curtains down. Um, yeah, they had to extinguish my bra, which had basically caught fire on the hot light. And um, yeah, that's how you bring curtain down. <laughs> that is spectacular. That's almost like a kind of finale that's even better than pouring the champagne over a naked body. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Something like really that. spectacular. You could have almost scripted that. I think those types of moments make burlesque even more enjoyable because it's just the true comedy of the actual life that we all have to live. And yeah, well done. Wow. Like, I don't know if I could have survived um, something like that and, and kind of enjoyed the applause or not. I'm also really interested to talk about your body compassion work because I think it's not unlike many of the stories of people around the world who've got into burlesque that it's become a true path into self-acceptance and then a lot of deeper questions about why we believe all these negative things about ourselves so where did body compassion come from and how is it going now oh thank you for asking as well because so many times it's just how many rhinestones can you fit on a corset so it's nice to be even asked that question thank you um I evolved body compassion really, um, it's a therapeutic approach um, and I help women and men uh, heal their body image, uh, their inner stories, their life confidence, uh, challenges that, are, that they're struggling with. Um, you'll know that I've always been um, uh, very vocal about body acceptance um, and really my whole body of work um, has always been about helping people to transform um, their relationship with their body. Um, so I do that with one-to-one uh, -one sessions and also with online and, and live retreats which are then moving more into kind of the luxury experience really living in your kind of dream movie if you like. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, as I say, um, I've always been outspoken uh, with regards um, body image and body acceptance, particularly being a curvy girl on what certainly in the early 2000s and for some time was a thin girl's stage. Yes. Um, and I really witnessed over the years every part of the public's expectations of our bodies um and i received so much fan mail from women and sometimes men um with body image challenges often i would be sent pictures of girls with really eat severe eating disorders mm -hmm. it's a real problem it mm -hmm. really is and my own mother um suffered with anorexia and bulimia I've grown up around it um, and even people around me you know performers actors actresses people with really profiley jobs with really severe body image and confidence uh, issues yeah and something I noticed that was quite suffocating with media and performing is like this real obsession with I mean I could call it the feathers and the rhinestones but you know that's unfair to say it's just burlesque but just the obsession with surface you know mm -hmm. um the 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 you know reality tv and, and insta makeup tutorials and you know everything's about putting a mask on and yet there's all this unhealed trauma and wounding that's just being covered up with like face tune and um <laughs> and yeah. apps and uh squeezing into a corset or a size two um and thinking so long as the surface is polished um that's who we are yeah. well no it's not we're not our rhinestones that's not who we are mm -hmm. so the last seven years i trained um professionally in nutritional psychology energy psychology dr gabor mate's uh, compassionate inquiry psychotherapeutic method i'm an embodied meditation teacher many years um uh, on the side of of, of uh, certifying and i've been putting the pieces together to evolve this approach for this real problem that i've been seeing all around me mm -hmm. um 
which I call body compassion because positivity <laughs> only scratches the only scratches the surface True. and it's compassion that heals mm. so you know to heal our body image to heal our inner critic our destructive behaviors our crippling anxieties you know and really transform the quality mm. of our relationship with our bodies um, how we relate to other people's bodies in a really meaningful way you know for me going back to this idea of the mask this is the unmasking it's what's beneath it it's what really matters you know our intrinsic uh self-worth that isn't coming from you know who in the front row is applauding or how many followers we have or um you know handbags dress size you know that is freedom you know mm -hmm. the real position of power is when we're connecting to our self-worth what's underneath the surface Mm -hmm. The power is really in the unmasking. Mm. That is so beautiful to hear you say. And actually, it's interesting because for me, you know, burlesque became more about this getting rid of the mask. I shaved my head about 10 years ago because I was getting so caught up in the vanity and the alter ego that I'd created. And so that was a big unveiling for me, like getting rid of the perception I had. And taking your hair off was a very deep <laughs> way to do that. And then I went on a voice uh, method, which is called soul voice. I'm actually going to be in Switzerland doing the next stages of that. And it became more about burlesque came more to me about actually this method for many people to start looking at a much deeper, deeper area. And I wonder if you had that too. Was burlesque your way to start enjoying your curves? But then you thought, hang on, there's something that's been deeply wrong from programming from family upbringing from media messages and that's why you went on your tangent um it's interesting that um you mentioned that actually um it was a little bit the reverse for me as i mentioned um i grew up around um eating disorders mm. so um in seeing the pain and suffering of a of an exceptionally starved body um yeah. Uh, creating immodesty um, and the very, very cartoonish, overly exaggerated shape was almost my way to heal that, um, uh, how can I say, um, you know, as, as, as my mother, as, as thin and thin as she would get, it was like her power was draining away as she was attempting to solve this problem in her life uh, mm -hmm. through restriction. And it was my way of kind of uh, finding a, a body form of to put kind of power and joy back mm -hmm. on back into the spotlight to put that wonder woman back into the spotlight and somehow um yeah really did that through you know I'd, I'd always question myself why is it that I'm so drawn to this overly exaggerated shape this sort of you know how much femininity can I cram into the you know <laughs> one image you know and I, I i really do think i was um uh reclaiming the power of curves of you know mm -hmm. I, I i always say fear of fat is fear of the feminine you know being able to present something that's that's soft that we're not you know we're told that we should be disciplined and be a good girl and show that by restricting ourselves and I was like, well, I was always kind of pouring out of my corsets and spilling over. And I, I, I kind of, I kind of felt that was my answer to that. And it's not the same for everyone. You know, um, I, I, I think we all have our own um, wounds that we heal. Um, and I appeal to a certain, you know, um, uh, uh, audience. Um, and I, I was never on there to be I was never on the stage to be playboy perfect. That wasn't really my jig. Um, it was more a creative expression, a way that I could choose, own, own my appetite for life, own my appetite for all the creativity that I wanted to put out there, um, be my own mistress of that, be my own mistress of how I wanted to express my body and my energy um, and, and not feel that I had to kind of kowtow to someone else's idea of how I should present my body and I'm not saying that everyone was really positive in the press about me I had negative comments about my dress size um, and I also had incredibly positive comments too and it's amazing how a woman's body really can divide opinion in that way and and you know 
that can be negative, but we can also say, look how much power it has when we are actually the mistresses of how we want to inhabit our bodies and how we want to connect with ourselves. So yes, we can say it's negative, but we can also see the power. That is how powerful we are, you know. Yeah, gosh, there's just so many little bite-sized pieces I want to put into quotes and memes that you've just said in such a powerful phrase in, in under a minute. That's phenomenal. Um, it's wonderful. I just think you have been, you know, even more representative in these like body compassion pieces that, that are coming across and all this work too. So thank you. I wanted to touch on the train 2003 video because Ooh. to me, that was a real moment where burlesque got into electronic music, which is my, my jig. And I've been working with producers for 10 years, married one in the next room and <laughs> trying to bring burlesque into this more modern kind of space. And I felt like that train video was just so on par with what I was seeking to do. So how was that? Because you shone in that video. It's still like held, held the test of time. Was it an amazing experience? Well, I mean, firstly, Alison is amazing. I mean, wow, what an artist. She's, she's you know, her output, her, her music is, is really incredible. And as a person, I adore her. Um, and um, that, job was really funny actually I was working in film production mm -hmm. and I heard through Ridley Scott Associates that um, they were uh, holding an audition and I thought I'm just going to go for it and uh, you know this is in the days where I wouldn't be carrying a pair of pasties around in my bag all day you know so I um, uh, that same day I went and got a pair of pasties from uh, Ashram Provocateur trotted to the audition <laughs> I'm stuck in my work clothes I just thought well I'm in a blouse I'm just take my blouse off pasties went on in the toilets came out this is the <laughs> this is the day when <laughs> um the, the the director running the audition put a cassette tape of the track <laughs> in and I freestyled I freestyled I got the job um I was delighted and then, um, the, and then uh, the, the shoot was happening as I was in Mexico. I had to jump on a plane, come back from Mexico. And so it was really interesting that um, the uh, costume they created for me, uh, Mrs. Jones, who created costumes for Kylie, all sorts of amazing uh, artists. And she created something that actually looked really Mexican. And I just thought, you know, the whole thing was, the whole thing was um, a great experience. And in wow. fact, the best part of it was getting to perform it live. And um, that was at Hammersmith Apollo. I think it's like seats 5,000. Wow. And the scream, the just the wave of just ovation and screaming when she was performing that track and I was on stage was just spine tingling. I mean, it was an incredible, it was an incredible show to perform in with her. And she's, she's such an incredible performer. Her voice is just extraordinary. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Well, I feel like it really set Neo Burlesque on a new tangent because those songs from those early albums of hers are still being used for a lot of artists today. They're just sexy. They kind of fit into a burlesque act like maybe like a kind of quiet piece that becomes a bit more raunchy, vice versa. And we had her the pleasure of a two years delayed concert with her finally appearing in London just last Friday. So I heard Train live and closed my eyes as trying to think about like the actual burlesque aspect coming to life. But it was just, you know, really electric, more than anything live that I've seen. And truly, I think that really puts our new sound you know electro swing came along not after, not long after that yeah. um, a lot of electronic music has started to kind of pay homage to ray charles frank sinatra ella fitzgerald but bring in this very kind of deep like synth and bass line sort of sound drum and bass too and so it's amazing i think you were kind of really at this cusp of a, a big change and now who would have thought the pandemic would have connected so many countries as they're all going to be watching this for World Burlesque Day, where we realized through the hashtag, we could just track all these different analytics and found burlesque in places like the Philippines and Bolivia and Estonia and Iceland. And, and it's been amazing to see. Does that delight you that it's reaching that many places now and that it's becoming such a part of culture? Oh, I think it's absolutely incredible. I mean, who wouldn't want to share such a 
rich and and fabulous uh, entertainment genre. Mm. I think you know, long may it rain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely. So I don't want to. Do, I know you're busy, and I just wanted to say this is coming to you a bit more glamorous version, but this is your certificate. <gasps> oh. Well done today, modesty blaze. It's going to have a stamp on it. It's going to be a little bit more um, presentable. And I'd love to also send a copy of my my recovery story, which is called Burlesque or Bust, going through psychosis, burlesque being a big part of my like recovery to the point of being here for World Burlesque Day. So those things are coming to you. And I just want to say a personal thanks, which I think is going to be echoed from everyone on this chat and anyone who's watched a video or picked up like a picture book and just thought, wow, because the character and the cartoon and that, yeah, oozing every piece of femininity into a picture really did work and I think is timeless. So thank you. Well, I'd like to also say thank you to you, firstly, for um, sharing your story with people. But also something I was musing just as I was about to log on was that, um, you know, we can be multidimensional now and, and certainly on multiple stages and spaces. Um, across time zones and as you bring up the pandemic you know I'm enjoying connecting people connecting with people both in person as you know being on stage with a live audience but also you know virtually and I think that with the conflict that we've been experiencing and seeing everywhere around us in so many forms mm -hmm. uh, for the last two or three years you know connection and connection of people and transcending boundaries and and uh, divisions is a really important thing if we want to be the change we want to see it's a really important thing for us all to do on the individual so i think you should also um be honored for actually bringing everyone together with something like world burlesque day what a beautiful initiative so thank you to you as well oh thanks that means so much to me and it's really been a pleasure it's it's, it was surprised me the way that it went, because I think if we hadn't been in lockdown, it would have taken a lot longer to get the momentum. And that was a kind of backwards blessing of the, the fact people were bored and at home and on their phones. And so I really take that to heart. I'm not going to like downplay the compliment, which is kind of something I'm not always great at accepting. And thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for the thanks. And so we will let you, um, disappear into your evening <laughs> afternoon and I am going to share the video of Train which is uh, an excerpt I found on Mute Records through Instagram and, and also the link on YouTube so people can see what I'm talking about. Some people may not know the song and um, yeah it's just been a real real joy to connect and thanks for our incredible like leadership. I think you've helped many people take burlesque to a new level and it's been really a joy. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Keep shining. <laughs> okay, darling. Bye. Bye.